Josh, what do you think? Um, there's, when, there's probably going to be more calls on the defense than there are going to be on the offense. There's more fouls that defense can commit during the possession than the offense can. So okay. Are, we're, we're, we're starting to get on track. Alan, can you help me with this? Uh, I mean, I'd say it's all about limiting the advantage that the defense is gaining on the, uh, on the offense. So maybe making sure that, that the offense is in their correct track. Okay, all right, we're starting to get there. We're 80-90% of our fouls on. The defense, right? Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, by refereeing we mean looking at, or essentially where our eyes are. Referee the defense. It literally means pick up the defense, watch the defender. Because even if we have an offensive foul, who tells us whether it's an offensive foul or a block? The defender does, right? Okay? If we have a play at the basket and a defender's up like this, who tells us if it's a foul or not? The, def the defense, right? Rarely do we referee the offense and call a foul. So it's simply watch the defender. They will tell you a lot on what kind of decision that you need to make. Now, it seems simple, right? Referee the defense, just, just watch the defender. It's kind of like when you first become a referee and you got to get out of the habit of ball watching. It's kind of the same process. So now all of a sudden you got to get used to, I want to pick up the defender. So simplify things and determine <coughs> who's going to make me make a decision. And then be patient. What does it mean to be patient? Anybody can, uh, can go ahead. What's like? Uh, Steve. Steve, how you doing? Uh, pretty good. Good. Uh, you hate uh, when you watch. You always see like the anticipation calls where the hand goes up before there's even contact. You got to watch and make sure the foul happens first. Absolutely. And especially on plays to the basket. That's when you have to be patient because what happens is that little guards like myself go in and try to create contact to get to the free throw line. So you have to be patient and you have to see everything happen and not anticipate. That's what we said. All right, let's talk about traveling. You just talked about traveling, right? Was it was a problem, it was, it was an issue, okay. This was actually a point of emphasis, that's why that says POE up there. That was a point of emphasis for us. So I just talked about refereeing the defense. This is the one time we'll kind of referee the offense. And let's find out what traveling is first. Traveling violation occurs when the, this, I need a basketball for this part. The dribbler picks up the pivot foot prior to the start of a dribble. Awesome. Okay. So I get the ball. Throw me a pass. Okay. I have two feet on the ground, right? What can I do to establish a pivot foot? I'm going to learn some rules here. I can do whatever. I, I had two feet on the ground. I caught the ball. Either foot is now my pivot foot. Okay. So in order... To, um, for a traveling violation to occur on a dribble, I have to, or to not travel, let me restate this. For me not to travel, when I start a dribble, I have to release the ball prior to my pivot foot coming off the floor. Okay? These are the easy ones. So what's the key here? You have to release, you have to make sure his foot's still there before you release it. Very good. Okay? So you have to see this foot. These are pretty simple. So if I go up and then I dribble, travel. Or often you'll see guys catch and, and they'll do one of those, okay? Or they'll switch pivot feet. It's like a split step, like they're going and they'll do one of those where they switch feet and then go. So the key to that is just picking up the foot. After ending a dribble, the player picks up the pivot foot and returns the pivot foot to the ground prior to releasing the ball for a pass or shot. So I'm dribbling, I end my dribble, I can pivot, I pick the, my pivot foot up, which I can do, because I'm not dribbling it. It's a traveling when I put it back to the floor. All right, so think about when you shoot a layup. You catch the ball, you go one, two, you go up. If your right foot came back down, which was your pivot foot, that would be a trap. Make sense? Player holding the ball touches the floor with the knee or any part of the body other than the hand or the foot. So if I'm going and I go down to a knee, 
that's a travel. If I go to an elbow, that's a travel. If I go down on my side, that's a travel. And a player that gains control while on the floor, then stands up or rolls over. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead, now. Uh, one thing you see a lot, especially down there, is a player either goes after the ball, dives after the ball, and kind of slides across yeah. the floor. The ball's on top, on the other side, across the floor. It, your momentum taking you across the floor has no bearing if it's a travel or not a travel. So if I'm going, and I go to grab the ball, and because I'm sliding, I slide 12 feet, doesn't matter, okay? You can out, when you get on the ground and you're on your stomach, just think each side is a pivot foot. So if I'm on my rear end, I cannot roll over to my stomach. That would be a trap. That's when you need to be aware of this. Yep, uh, players on the ground, the doctor who's called, they get it. Uh, it says, until they stand up, can I go to a knee? If you're on your stomach, can you go to a knee? Like if you're like this? Yeah, if you're, on your, if you're on your stomach, you get a loose ball, you're on your side, can you roll up or yes. go up to a knee to that position? Yeah. And it's not a travel until you stand up. If you're like on your stomach and yeah. you want to go up like this, yeah, yeah you could do that. It's like your knee, so <coughs> something you're like your knees become a pivot foot, and then, or if you're on your backside, it's your butt. So like, if you're on your back, you can also sit up. That's not a problem, all right? So those are tricky ones. Those don't happen all the time, but they happen sometimes. Here's the keys to calling traveling. Find a pivot foot. We talked about that. That is absolutely the number one key. Okay? <coughs> Don't guess. <coughs> Call the obvious ones. And ugly does not always equal violation. Often we see something and we're like, man, that looks funny. But that doesn't always mean it's a travel, right? So don't get fooled by that. Stick to calling the obvious ones. I think if I know where I was coming from. I think Eric wants us to get the ones that are on the perimeter. They catch the ball, pivot foot goes before they start a dribble. Or they go, and it's like pop, 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 and then they dribble. Those are the ones that we want to try to get. Okay? And that's easy because when they're 25 feet from the basket, we don't have to worry as much about the defender. So anytime somebody catches on the, on the perimeter, I want you just to think pivot foot, pivot foot, pivot foot. Once they start dribbling, what do we need to, who do we need to referee? Okay. What well, player gets the ball? What are we thinking? Starts dribbling, going to the basket, we think what? Pretty simple, right? No? Okay. We're gonna look at some traveling play. Hold on, I need to turn this down. Okay. Here we go. No, I'll be okay. Okay, I got this fancy little pen on my dis dis display here. So, <clears throat> number 11 catches the ball. You guys can see that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Left foot's pivot foot. He has the ball. Okay, so we're just going to watch watch his pivot foot here. Okay. Pivot foot moves. It went up, went down. Ball still in his hand. What do we have? Traveling, Traveling right? Okay, we're going to watch that in full motion. We'll go back and play it slow. Watch it. Left foot. See that? Those. Are, that's an obvious one, correct? That's the one that me and Eric want you to call. Catches the ball. There's my circle. Left foot. Switch his feet. Actually switches feet again, and now he releases. So he can 